hello guys welcome back to this channel once again in today's video we are going to look at the probability of an event loss of probability and then also we are going to solve a lot of examples as well now if you are new here make sure you subscribe to this channel like this video and invite all your friends to watch this video now let's talk about the probability of an event Now let's consider the events of tossing a six-sided die. Suppose that we are interested in the event A obtaining an even number. So event A obtaining an even number. The total number of outcomes or the sample space of tossing a six-sided die are one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the event A is listed as even numbers, so we have two, four, and then six. Now, if the die is symmetrical, then all the six numbers have the same chance of appearing, which means that all the six events are equally likely events. Therefore, the number of ways that event A can occur is 3, because we have 3 elements in set A. And the total number of equally likely outcomes are 6. So the number of elements in the sample space is 6. In that case, the probability of event A occurring is the number of ways that event A can occur divided by the number of elements in the sample space and this is equal to 3 over 6. 3 goes into itself once into 6 2 times so that is 1 over 2. So the probability that event A occurs is 1 over 2. So basically this is how to find the probability of equally likely events. Now let's move on and talk about loss of probability. So for the loss of probability, loss of probability. So let S denote the sample space of an experiment. Let S denote the sample space of an experiment and let a be any event of s so a is any event of s then a prime or a bar is called the complement of a So when we talk about the complement of A, basically it is the element in the sample space or the universal set that is not found in set A. So that is what we mean by the complement of A. And the empty set is denoted by the null sign. Now let's move on to the laws of probability. So for law 1. The probability of an event A occurring is between 0 and 1 inclusively. Thus, 0 is less than or equal to the probability of event A occurring is less than or equal to 1. So the probability of an event A occurring is between 0 and 1 inclusively. Now what this primarily means is that the probability of an event is always between 0 and 1. Probability of an event cannot be greater than 1, neither can it be less than 0. So always, the probability of an event is between 0 and 1 inclusively. Now let's talk about law 2. The probability of the sample space occurring is equal to 1. The probability of the sample space occurring is equal to 1. Intuitively, when an experiment is performed, 
exactly one of the elements in the sample space will happen. So we say that the probability of the sample space occurring is equal to 1. So to law 3, the probability of the empty set is equal to 0. The probability of the empty set is equal to 0. Now in the empty set, we have nothing inside, which means that the number of ways that this set can occur is 0. So now 0 divided by the sample space is still 0. So the probability of an empty set is equal to 0. To law 4, the probability of the complement of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of the event A. So the probability of the complement of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of event A. So if the probability of event A occurring is 0 0.6, then what this primarily means is that the probability that event A will not occur, which is the probability of the complement of event A, is equal to 1 minus 0 0.6, which is equal to 0 0.4. So now let's move on and solve some questions on the probability of an event and the loss of a probability. So let's solve the first example. Example 1. A number is chosen at random from the set U. Now set U is made up of elements 6, 9, 13, 14, 16, 19, 21, and 26. What is the probability that the number is A, odd, B, even, C, a multiple of 3, and then D, greater than 20? So let's solve this problem together. Now we are told from the question that a number is chosen at random from set U. And then set U is made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So set U is made up of 8 elements. Now let's solve for A. We are going to find the probability that the number is odd. So first of all, we say that let E1 be the event of obtaining an odd number. So let E1 be the event of obtaining an odd number. So now let's write down the list of the set E1. So for odd numbers, we have 9, 13, 19, and then 21. So this is the list of E1. So the probability of obtaining an odd number E1 is equal to the number of ways that E1 can occur divided by the number of elements in set U. So we have number of elements in E1 to be 4. So 4 divided by 8. 4 goes into itself once into 8 two times. So the probability of E1 to occur is 1 over 2. Now let's solve for B. So for B we say that let E2 be the event. of obtaining an even number. Let E2 be the event of obtaining an even number. So the list of E2 for even numbers we have 6, 14, 16 and then 26. So 6, 14, 16, and then 26. So for E2, we also have four elements. So the probability that E2 occurs is equal to the number of ways that E2 occurs divided by the sample space. So that is 4 divided by 8, which is also equal to 1 over 2. 
Now let's solve for C and D. So before we solve for C and D, let's write down the list of elements in set U. So for set U, we have 6, 9, 13, 14, 16, 19, 21, and then 26. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So for C, we are going to find the probability that the number is a multiple of 3. So a multiple of 3. So let E3 be the event that a multiple of 3 was obtained so the list of e3 is 6 is a multiple of 3 9 is a multiple of 3 21 is also a multiple of 3 so we have 3 elements in e3 now let's find the probability that e3 occurs so the number of ways that E3 occurs divided by the number of elements in the sample space or U. So that is 3 divided by 8. And this is the probability that event E3 occurs. Now for D, we are going to find the probability that the number obtained is greater than 20 so greater than 20 so let e4 be the event that a number greater than 20 was obtained so the set e4 is made up of 21 and then 26 greater than 20 so 21 and then 26 so the probability that a number greater than 20 was obtained is equal to the number of ways of obtaining a number greater than 20 divided by the number of elements in U. So we have 2 divided by 8. 2 goes into itself once into 8 4 times. So the probability that E4 occurs is equal to 1 over 4.